What's up YouTube? Today I'm gonna go over a video that's a little bit different. I'm gonna go over how every single content creator slash streamer farmed their headhunter and mage blood in the first few days of the league. Now the reason I want to do this is because a lot of people always ask how exactly do you farm a headhunter and the simple answer to this is just play a lot and commit to your farming strategy. There's not even one singular farming strategy that will get you to headhunter slash mage blood, especially when it's an expansion and everything is kind of up in the air about what's going to be the best. But these are the people I was able to find either through they had a YouTube video or they were streaming on Twitch. And I know there's other people who farmed their headhunter, but these are the people that I found that had a verifiable way that required me zero investment to actually find in what they actually did. So Right off the bat, you can see there's an energy drink here, right? Why do you need an energy drink to farm the headhunter slash mage blood? Well, you have to stay up for 40 hours straight, right? Staying up is imperative. So make sure to have a headhunter and then you'll be able to find this mage blood right here. But this is obviously not for everyone. Not everyone has the time to play as much, but it's always nice to be able to see what strategies people use because I do think the silver lining in all of this is that there are a lot of strategies to be done and you can play pretty much any build and still be able to farm the headhunter. So number one, before we dive into how the methods were actually done, we have to see this is you, right? You are in bed trying to go to sleep, but you're just dreaming of your headhunter slash mage, but you're like, shouldn't I wake up? I should wake up. I should go farm. Every minute I'm sleeping, someone else is farming and deli ore prices are going up. So this is pretty much you. You're not having a restful sleep, so you need to get up and you need to put in the time, right? So number one thing, you need to have the time to play a lot in the first few days. This is pretty much imperative. Your play time in the first 24 to 48 hours is the most important factor. So stock up on energy drinks. The main reason why you want to do this is because a lot of the supplies are dirt cheap at the start because no one else is buying them. No one else has the currency. So if you do have the currency, you're able to pick up like deli orbs. A lot of deli orbs for 3 to 4 chaos when they just skyrocket to like 5 to 10 to 15 chaos at the moment. And this is very, very important. Your play time in the first beginning of the part of the game is huge. Everything you do is worth a lot, lot more. Essences are able to stealth for a bunch. Metamorph catalysts are able to be sold for a bunch. Even boss uniques from Awakener and Maven could be sold for a fortune, right? Anything is worth a lot in the beginning. Most builds in this uh, video are low investment with horrible gear so as you need to be investing all into your maps so if you have a super expensive build that you're spending like multi x upgrades to make a function in maps to do these uh, farming methods then you're not going to be able to invest any money into your maps and that's why playing lightning strike is a bit of a struggle because you do need to get that base gear level of getting like secrets of suffering or gale force you also need to buy the amulet and you need to get a six link for sure so there's like some basic things that you need to invest in that's probably a little bit more than someone playing like Fizz Trapper or someone playing like EA Ballista Totem, which functions on pretty much SSF gear. And the most important thing that I do think is the biggest takeaway from this video is it's nice to see different methods and maps being ran. It's kind of boring seeing people always run the exact same maps and exact same strategy. But in reality, there's a lot of different strategies and different maps that you could choose to do and even Outside of this video, there's probably a lot of other different ones that people who did farm a headhunter didn't use the same methods here. But let's get straight into it, the actual methods that people used. So number one, we have Firegrass. So Firegrass farmed the mage blood. So out of all of these people, he's the only one who was able to farm a mage blood, which is quite impressive as a mage blood is roughly double the price of a headhunter. And mage blood is definitely something that increases in value a lot too. So what Firegrass did was he ran Caldera T11 maps. And the reason being was they had a good layout and high mob count. The reason you do T11s is because when you're doing red maps in the Deli Orb, you get better rewards overall. So he ran 80% Deli with Scarab Deli Orbs. So these are skittering Deli Orbs. It does leave you with an inventory full of Deli Orbs after you finish because you get 9 reward layers or 10 reward layers of Deli Orbs. So it's going to be a lot of loot to carry out. Now... He used Rusted Harbinger, Abyss, Breach, and Shaper Scarabs and put Abyss on map device. He think, I think he calculated that this would give the most amount of mobs. And the more amount of mobs you get, the more Delirium rewards you'll get on your map, right? But I do think the biggest thing that he said that contributed to his enjoyment of the league was that he used a trader to buy single Deli Orbs on day two. And this allowed him to map nonstop. So right now, if you try to go like buy 
Delhi orbs. It is pretty hard to buy Delhi orbs. So we go here. Let's go look at POE trade real fast. So if you try to go buy Delhi orbs, I do have a Delhi orb search right here. You can see that there's a lot of single sellers, right? So if you were to buy every single one of these, and there wasn't really bulk supply at the start, for every map you would be doing, you would have to whisper four people to be able to do it. And whispering four people to do one map, and this doesn't even include the scarabs, is an absolutely terrible, terrible thing. He did have to pay the trader 33% cut of his profits, but this actually probably increases uh, money and his enjoyment level because having to trade is the worst. So this is the guy trading over here, and here are all his tabs open of POE trade, trying to whisper people to buy Delia orbs. So very important thing is if you can find a trader for you, and even if he's willing to take a pretty big cut, it is definitely worth it for your enjoyment and profit margin's sake. Now he did play EA Ballista Totems. I think he tested out a lot of different builds and this build allowed him to do like 80% Delhi pretty comfortably. And it was pretty good overall. He was able to farm the only Mage Blood of the League out of the people I know. Now next up we have Larson, another former content creator and streamer. And he ran Out Can Go with Metamorph Scarab. So this is the method that I saw that was pretty much the most interesting because this is a method that is very, very low investment. And yeah, I think the only thing he used was a Metamorph Scarab. He did not use a Void Stone. I don't think Firegrass used Void Stones either. Now, the reason being is that Void Stones requires you to kill Maven. It requires you to kill all of the endgame bosses. And if you're killing all of the endgame bosses, it's a pretty big problem. And another thing about Firegrass's method is the trader allows him to liquidate his profits, right? Because a lot of the rewards from skittering, it's going to be a bunch of scarabs. So without liquidating the scarabs, he's unable to buy more stelly orbs, right? So this trader is pretty crucial for Firegrass's strategy. So this strategy, he took the Essence, Strong Boss, Harbinger, Shrines, and Delirium nodes. So this is pretty much, he's trying to do maps as fast as possible. He's out and going on them, and he's choosing stuff that spawns a lot of basic stuff in the map, right? Essences are really worth a lot at the start. You can use it to craft different items and sell it to people. Strong Boxes, he took the Strong Box Scarab node, and he took like the Corrupted Strong Box node, which is very, very helpful. Harbinger, he took the Harbinger nodes right here. This added a bunch of mobs to the map, even without a Scarab. And because he's running so many maps with Alk and Go, he's using an Arch Nemesis recipe of the one that Grimrow showed everyone, which is Mirror Image, which gives you uh, Scarabs and Currency, Tree Ant, which makes the mo extra mobs drops the previous rewards. So this will also drop a bunch of Scarabs. Assassin gives Currency, and Rejuvenator also gets Currency. So this gives you a bunch of Currency and Scarab generation. And because you're doing so many maps so fast, instead of like eight minutes per map, you're able to get a lot of the base components, which is Echoist, Soul Conduit, Toxic, Sentinel, Steel, Infused, Dead Eye, Vampiric, Gargantuan. So if there was a way to make a filter, you could probably filter this all out and then be able to do the strategy. But I think Filter Blade still has not fully updated on letting you sort out the type of organs or components, right? So this is probably my favorite strategy out of all of them because this requires very little trading. No scarabs really besides metamorph and no sextants at all. And it's a pretty fast and fun because you get to do so many different maps, right? So many maps in a row. Now next we have Path of Math and Path of Math strategy is pretty much the same as mine and Firegrass strategy. And this is, he ran Delhi Orbs maps. I think it was doing 40 to 60% Delhi. And he's using the you know, Delusions of Persecutions, but Firegrass was using this too. So what this node does is it guarantees you a double boss spawn. When you do it on 60%, I think on 40%, it's like an 80% chance. So let's, if you look at my character here, you can see the node over here. The Lusions of Persecution, it gives you Delirium Encounters are 100% more likely to spawn unique bosses. And the Delirium Bosses drop 50% increased Simulacra Splinters, and it has 50% increased chance to drop unique Cluster Jewels. Now this is especially important because if you can get a Secrets of Suffering early on, I think a lot of the times the Secrets of Suffering was like 5 Exalts or so. So if you got one to drop early on, you would pretty much almost get a doctor from just like the cluster jewel dropping, right? But the bulk of the profit is from getting the simulacrum splinters that you get from all these Delhi or maps. He also like Firegrass decided to put Abyss on the map device. I think it gives the most mobs per uh, chaos spent on the craft. I did think that Beyond would be better, but I was probably wrong and that Abyss was probably more cost efficient. And uh, putting Beyond on a map device also makes the map insanely hard. And I think that's something that is not overstated enough. 
getting like double beyond on the map will get you killed because you'll be spawning a bunch of beyond bosses and most of these people's builds were not that uh were not super super tanky i think this guy larson he actually plays storm brand or something with impulsas so and he was actually low life with our arrogant arrogance right so that's why they probably don't decide to put uh beyond on a map dive map device is kind of suicidal and he also did not use any void stones as he didn't farm the end game bosses right away and then he didn't use any scarabs and this is pretty much because he had no trader and he pretty much just wanted to only buy deli orbs and then run the map with abyss on it right and he did play a fizz trapper which is a pretty good build for clearing uh and it has really good single target for taking down the pesky delirium bosses so next up you have myself the idiot one of the biggest dum dums around so I wanted to farm the head hunter. I wanted to finish the end game to get all the void stones. And I wanted to experience that new Atlas progression in kind of a race environment. And I wanted to try out all the new bosses, right? So this is kind of like the thing where you don't focus on anything. You're a jack of all trades. So you're kind of screwed. And that's why my farm was kind of slower because I finished the end game. I got 117 Atlas bonus. And I got all my voice stones. I wanted to do a full juice method because I thought it was going to be fun. And not to mention, I was playing one of the worst builds of all time for farming this stuff because I was playing Lightning Strike Berserker, which does require me to get a baseline of some gear level in order to do the content, which means I needed to get alternate ailments. And I ended up getting the amulet. Not like it was that much of a cost overall, but compared to playing like Seismic Trapper or something like that, or EA Ballista Totems, there is definitely more of a gear entry level, especially to be able to do uh, T16 delis with Beyond on a map device and High Deli. So overall, if you don't commit to a map a strategy, you will slow your progression down a lot. But honestly, I could not really care that much if I got the head on her like a day or two slower. So I wanted to finish the Atlas progression. And I also like doing the Void Stones because having sextants also makes the maps that much juicier but definitely not as great of a strategy as the previous people because i didn't focus on anything but i focused on my fun so i put beyond a map device and i use abyss blight legion harbinger scarabs i did use sextants so you can see here i got the abyss nodes harbinger nodes legion nodes and then i also took all of the blight nodes blight is incredibly hard and dangerous so if you don't have a very strong character i would not advise doing this and I pretty much used whatever Deli Orb was the cheapest. I did not have a trader. I had to suffer through the trade site and try to buy it from people. And it was a miserable experience. I would have paid a trader like 20, 30, 40%, honestly. And I did play a Lightning Strike Berserker. And these are the Void Stones I got. And this is my tree. And it's pretty similar to the current tree I have right now. Basically Legion, Abyss, Harbinger here. Uh, shrine here, some extra rare mobs. And yeah, all these uh, Delirium nodes. Everyone probably took these Delirium nodes. And I also took the beyond notes on the side. So let's go see what are the conclusions we can actually draw from all of these farming methods. So the conclusion we have here is you do whatever farming method you enjoy. Like it doesn't really matter how you reach the destination. It's about how you get there. And if you're driving in traffic, you're not going to be having fun. And the traffic is really the trade system in the game. The trade system is atrocious. I do think that a lot of these people who chose the certain methods they did, they chose it because they got to avoid the trade system. Like these people, Path of Math, literally do only needed to trade for like some Delirium Orbs. He didn't need to get Scarabs or Sextants. This guy only needed to get a Metamorph Scarab. He didn't even need to buy Delirium Orbs. And Firegrass pretty much had a trader the whole time, right? Meanwhile, I'm trading for Scarabs. I'm trading for Sextants. I'm trading for Delirium Orbs. And it was horrible. I felt like I was spending so much time trading, right? But... New expansion offers a lot of different ways to farm efficiently, and this is definitely true. You can even do like more Alk and Go strategies. I know Grimroll has one currently with just altars and then just running as many maps as possible and trying to get the altars to get the Scarab rewards. So it's very, very strong and it's a very, very cool concept, but I'm not really sure if it's because it's new and it hasn't been solved yet because I feel like if the stuff is more solved, everyone would just gravitate towards one specific early game farming method. But I do think that in the early game, there's so many different methods and everything you do is pretty much profitable because you are ahead of the curve by default. So the main thing of the league is that it raises the floor of currency game for casual players, but it will inevitably lower the currency game for experienced players. 
Now, the reason being is that a lot of the power is now in the passive tree, which is not really gated by anything besides Atlas progression. It is not very hard to progress your Atlas. And so it's not very hard to get nodes like emblematic, right? So nodes like emblematic that before required a lot more investment into the Atlas tree, but right now you only need to spend like a, not that many points. You need to have like 30 maps completed and you can get a bunch of juicy stuff. And another thing to note is that a lot of the power from before was in the watchstone. So you can see here, this is why like a lot of the emblems are so cheap. Like Karui, Eternal, Templar, Vault Emblems, and Marikef are all dirt cheap. And the reason being is that before people had to roll watchstones in order to get the power of getting more Marikef in the map. But now all you have to do is you just take this one node here, which is less fortunate or less good. Or it's not as good as the previous nodes with the watchstones fully rolled. And even if you did the Lyra Mirror farming, now you're getting 4%, 4 4%. And then this is what, 20% Simulacrum Splinters total? Or it's 20, uh, yeah, 20% total. And before you were able to get up to 50% increase if you roll watchstones. So overall, if the specialization into a specific strategy is a lot worse this league. But overall, you could do a lot more strategies simultaneously. And it does make for a pretty more enjoyable mapping experience. But it also means that for experienced players who did focus solely on a strategy, it is going to be a lot worse. And I do think that the currency gain for most people will plateau to a certain amount that will revolve around what you just get for basic mapping. And I do think that's a pretty good thing for new players though. And this is the main thing is League Mechanic UI needs a desperate rework. This league mechanic UI is atrocious. The fact that there's no sorting and it's just sorted everywhere. There's no way of like a stash tab system maybe of each uh, different type of component. It's awful. I think they need to give us more space. To think that they originally wanted to give us a five by five space shows me that they are hating us or something. How can you ex imagine playing this with a five by five square, right? So absolutely crazy. But overall, League is great fun. Lots of different farming methods. If you want to farm a head on our mage blood, most important thing is to stay up and play as much as possible. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, exalts, and mage bloods than me. And see you next time. Bye.